Let's just walk around back real quick. I'll show you the foundation and what we're dealing with here. Then we'll get to digging. Lots of daffodils, unfortunately, they're gone by. You see that's where the blooms were on them. And uh, let's look at this. Yeah, look at that. Oh, wow. Unfortunately, this is where the house stood. You can see it's just a massive amount of trash. Uh, apparently, this burned down. There was a big house here, big, like, log house. That was... <laughs> Schumann? It's a big log house here. Yeah, I think it burned down like 15, 20 years ago or so. Um, they were restoring it, but it is a mess now. That is a mess. Let's take a quick peek at it. You got a little chimney here. Of course, that's a new chimney. I don't really see any evidence of the old chimney, but you can tell it was definitely an older house. Always be careful of nails um, because of this. I guess that's where the chimney sat. This was the uh, basement or cellar hole full of trash, so we won't find anything in here. Uh, but look how small the walkway is to get in and out of here. But if you weighed more than like 87 pounds, I don't know how you would get through that. All right, a little more looking and then we'll get to digging. Gonna be loaded with junk, obviously, lots of tin. See parts of the yard here, nice little wall. They say the well was uh, down by that tree, but it's all caved in. We'll look at the little Johnny, Johnny house, the outhouse in a minute. Um, that's about it, I guess, really. It's just gonna be really trashy, man. But hopefully we'll find a little something. All right. Let me go, look at this, check this out. These are, these are irises. These are another type of flower that people plant. And these are very, very, very hardy. I've seen these grown in, in uh, cow pastures, from houses, from, well, one time, from a house that was gone for over 200 years. And uh, those irises were still growing out in this pasture on the rock break. It's very hardy. My favorite flower. I love irises. All right, enough of that. Let's get to digging. So I'd like to try to get my first target um, on camera. And actually, I didn't this time because I, uh, I, I knew there's going to be a lot of this stuff in here. This is like the fifth uh, little can that I've dug. Unfortunately, these read like 88, sound really good. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty junky. And I'm just right next to the house still, so... We might have to get a little bit further away. Yeah, this is a shame, isn't it? <laughs> we have to get like 100 yards up the hill. Yeah, where maybe the more modern people were too lazy to take the trash. <sighs> I'm still finding a lot of junk, but I want to show you something uh, I think is interesting. Earlier in the video, I told you there were some peonies, which is a type of plant that, well, it's a flowering plant that people plant around their houses. And if you notice, they're getting ready. These are the blossoms getting ready to come out on them. And every blossom here has little ants on them. I don't know if you know, can see that or not. But they all, all have ants. See, they cover with ants. What, and that has ladybug. From what I've been told, I'm, I'm assuming this is true, if a peony does not have ants nearby, um, they will never bloom. Because the ants do something to that bud that allows it to open up. I can't say that's true because I don't know for sure, but I've never seen a peony plant that wasn't covered with ants. So I suspect there's some truth to that. Well, here is my first non-beer can target. It's a letter P. I don't think that's a company letter from the Civil War, but I think it's probably off a car. I guess it's a P. <laughs> Pontiac, probably. Uh, it's actually quite a few signals right in this little area. It sounds just like it, so there might be some more letters. Might dig dig one more but um there's so many beer cans in this area still i'm not too far from the house i'm i'm losing hope already i, I get disgusted pretty easy <laughs> but when there's a lot of junk i guarantee there's good stuff here just a matter really of getting down there and uh, getting under this layer of trash that's on top so i got a really nice signal here and i threw it out of the hole and i think it's this thing Ooh, what is that I thought that was a piece of junk, but now that I'm looking at it, it might be better than a piece of junk, slightly. Not sure what that is. Um, it's reading almost like brass. Does that say U.S. on it? What is that? No, I don't think so. It looks like it's probably partially melted. I can't tell. That's a brass rivet or something. That Probably something more newish, I suspect. But anyway, down in the hole... I see something that's red, and I suspect this is going to be a toy car. What do you think? Take it out with this other piece of junk. <laughs> Maybe not. No, I don't know what that is. All right, put that aside. Maybe it's part of that. And uh, dig it out. 
All right, I'm gonna set you down. It makes it a little bit easier. We're just trying to get underneath and pry it up. Wow, that <laughs> plant broke. I'll show you something in a minute. You know what? That's just a rock. I wonder why there's red on it. Did you see that? Isn't that weird? This piece of iron there. I mean, is that iron? That's probably another rock. I don't know why that was red, but um, yeah, anyway, check that hole in a minute, but. These little bushes right here brushed up against them. They have thorns all over them. I think these are hawthorns. But it's like there's just something dripping out of them, like water or something. Look at the well, those are leaves, but I could feel it's like uh, nectar coming out of them, dropping on my arm. Uh, yeah, let's check this. Yeah, that was it, I guess. I think it reads really high, but that looks like a margarine screw, doesn't it? It's definitely melted, whatever it is. Hmm. All right. Better luck next time. Eh? So I had a little uh, signal here, I dug it up, and it's a piece of something that is, mm, I don't know if that's chrome or just aluminum or what, but boy, I tell you, I'm really afraid I'm going to cut myself on it. I was thinking about leaving it there. I don't want poor Todd to come along and dig it up and cut himself, so I'm going to have to, <laughs> I'm trying to get it out just digging along. I hope it's not like 10 feet long, but that's uh, definitely a, a slicer right there. Todd's there, and I've been all the way around the house, well, almost all the way around. This is the front walkway. Thought we'd try over here, see if we can find a coin or two. And I just got this little signal right here, and I think that's a pewter spoon. Part of a pewter spoon bowl that's been flattened out. Uh, so that can definitely date back to, um, you know, the early 1800s, if that's the case. Now I'm 99% sure on it. Fingers crossed we might be on it now. It's a lot of junk around this place, so it's incredible. <laughs> That's where I found the pewter spoon bowl right there, and I'm still by the house. Lots of signals here, but I'm getting mostly pull tabs. Uh, but I did just dig this weird little thing, which I thought was going to be like a iron rivet top or something, but this actually gives me absolutely no signal on the metal detector. I don't think that's a rock. I'm not sure what that is. We'll have to take a closer look at it. And uh, I'm getting little pieces of pewter. It's probably like to a mason jar lid, unfortunately. That's, that's, that's kind of interesting there, huh? Uh, hopefully we'll figure that one out. Todd says he found a little something over here, so I'll check it out. It's not fun too, a whole lot. What you get? Oh, that's nice, man. Yeah. <laughs> Big old uh, pewter spoon handle, huh? Yeah. So that's definitely right there in the early 1800s. Yeah, that's ish. what I'm looking for. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. That's good, man. I'm liking yeah. it. It's a pretty one, too. Yeah. Had some money. It's not like a homemade one. I don't know if wooden you know, mold that they made in the basement. <laughs> yep. I like it. Yep. Is it that deep? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, that's awesome, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations. I'm psyched now. Back to work. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a nice big signal here and I uh, started digging down. I was getting these pieces of iron out of here. Um, don't know how old they are, but I imagine they're fairly old. A lot of little nails and stuff. Don't see any pottery or glass. And that's the bottom right there. Nothing's deeper than that, I don't think. Um, a little bit of charcoal, but again, this house burned down. That actually might be coal right there. Uh, but there's a lot of charcoal up around the house, but I just want you to see what we're looking at right here, but I'm gonna go ahead and cover this back up. There was more pottery and stuff in here and like buttons and little gold coins I keep digging, but well, there isn't. House is right there and I worked my way around and just dug this um, iron stirrup-like looking thing. I don't think it's a stirrup, but uh, it's pretty interesting. And there's a pile of stones right here. Now the owner was telling us that there was there was a dug well on this property on this side of the house but he thought it was filled in so i don't know if this is part of where the well was and they filled it full of rocks or if there's a building here the outhouse we'll go check it out in a minute hopefully gramps isn't up there uh mummified on the pot but we'll find out so by the tree here i dug an awful lot of junk uh like aluminum and stuff but i just dug another spoon bowl i do believe this one is going to be like copper though yeah, definitely copper but i was actually leaving here i'm going to go over to the privity look for gramps on the pot although technically I must say he wouldn't be on the pot in the privy because the pot would be something you keep in the house like a chamber pot that you would go in at night so you don't have to go outside in the morning you take it out here and you can dump it in the uh, outhouse like a chamber pot that's where that term comes from uh on the pot now just a quick little story for you. I promise I'll keep it brief. When I was down in Australia with uh, Warren and uh, Colleen, we were looking at an old home site and there was a, a chamber pot there. And I looked at it, you know, and I said, hey, that's a chamber pot. And then Warren's like, it's an underbed. 
No, I can't even say it. <laughs> With an ostrich. That's an underbed. <laughs> Something like that. I'm like, what? Underbed. <laughs> and I'm like, this went on for like 10 minutes. I could not figure out what he was saying. And finally he says, uh, boy, <laughs> don't you speak English? It's an under the bed. Underbed. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was pretty funny. You have to watch the video though. <laughs> it was a lot funnier probably being there even. Anywho, we're going to go look and see if we can find Gramps up there on the throne. I guess I can say throne. And uh, just check it out real quick and maybe go up on the hill behind it. See if there's some Civil War stuff. <laughs> Always open. Okay, let's just go up and take a look at the outhouse just for the heck of it. Uh, always be careful when you're looking in these kind of places because there'll be uh, wasps and stuff have nests in there. And if you get too close to them, they'll come out and get you. Yep, that's what it is. Well, it's amazing. He's asked raccoon doo-doo there. I guess this was a two-holer, so two people could go in there at once. Um, really kind of high. Look how high that was. <laughs> Kind of weird not much of a hole in the ground which is odd but all around they also it's not very old but there's probably an older one out here somewhere could have been here could have been oh uh, there's actually a little depression up there by that tree i saw maybe we'll look at that again that could have been the original one i'm not gonna waste my time going around this but i'm gonna go up in the back behind it a little bit in this little flat right here not sure why there's a trench coming down from the outhouse you can see it's very very direct maybe there's a path from down there up to here I don't know, um, but we're gonna we're gonna hit the flat and flat behind it. I'm rapidly losing hope with this site. Um, just a lot of junk, man. I mean, I've been here a couple hours. You probably don't realize that, but been several hours and you've got two spoon bowls. <laughs> okay, so I'm way up the hill behind the outhouse. I decided to just take a little walk, <sighs> get some exercise, because you know we've been stuck at home. And I don't, haven't been getting a lot of exercise lately. <laughs> So I'm out of breath. Anyway, up here on this hillside, I have almost no signals. I got one screamer of a signal. Sounded really good. Figure, figured it was just a rifle casing. Popped it out of the ground, and I don't know what it is for sure, but I think it might be pretty cool. That's a hole it came from. I popped the dirt over here. What do you think that is? Do you have a clue? Nothing right there. I'm going to guess before I pick it up, okay? I'm thinking it's a mouthpiece to like a bugle. A musical instrument. I found those before like in Civil War camps. I'm not saying this is Civil War, Civil War era, but I think it's a mouthpiece of some type of, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> blow blow in, blow, I don't even know, what do you call those things? You know, instrument, instrument that you blow into. <sighs> Been cooped up too long. All right, I see that or spark plug. Ready? What is it? Oh my God, it is, it is, it is, look. Wow, that thing's massive. That is so cool. Like I said, I found these in uh, Civil War camps. You know, like they, they used them to signal, uh, you know, get people up in the morning and to call, call people together and stuff. That is a massive mouthpiece to some type of instrument. It's kind of peeled back there. It's kind of weird looking. I've never seen one like that. I guess it was dam somebody damaged it on purpose somehow, but let me clean that up a little bit. We'll get a little closer look. Who knows, it could be a nice Civil War camp right on this hill, which would be right behind the house. Wouldn't that be awesome? Find of the day for me. I'm not going to find anything better than this, I can guarantee. Well, I shouldn't say that, but I don't think I'll find anything better than this today. This is awesome. Okay, so I've got it cleaned up a little bit. I want you to take a quick peek at it because I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Man, that thing is really heavy too. I'm going to say for sure... I'm going to I'm going to stake my reputation that this is Civil War era or before. Nice heavy piece. I've never found these except in camps. And they destroyed it for some reason. All right. Maybe it's just loaded with Confederate belt buckles that whole hillside right there. Wouldn't that be awesome? Of course we'll have to get taught after the first couple signals, so well, first couple good targets if we if we get any more than this. So that's where I found the pewter mouthpiece right there. And there's some iron in here. Not a lot. But I better start digging a few pieces to make sure they're not bayonets or something. And just dug this. And this is a uh, part of a sickle bar moor. Those little shark teeth looking things that I find in my videos and you'll probably find as well. A slide in that groove right there. But yeah, that's all that is. But I guess I'm going to have to dig a few of these iron signals to see if there's anything military. Or at least look to try to determine if they're square nails. You know, versus fence wire. <laughs> I'm still on cloud nine with that uh, that uh, mouthpiece. That's that's pretty cool right there. 
right over there is where I found the mouthpiece and I went zigzag down below it zigzagged above it went all the way up through there and coming back down the hill here this is my first non ferrous target that I have found lots of iron in here I mean not a tremendous amount but a fair amount nice little signal here could be a shotgun shell could be a rifle casing could be a bullet clean you off a little bit there you go usually I just lick it but since you're watching me um, we'll dig this one together just in case it's a bullet I'll let you listen to it too. By the way, I'm using the AT Max today. Zero discrimination, maximum sensitivity, uh, because there's not a lot of signals up here. But this is the signal. See, it's nice, good sized signal. Not quite as high as I'd like to see it for a giant piece of lead, but it should be right about, about there. Yeah, see, look, it's a rifle casing. Oh, well. <laughs> we still have our bugle mouthpiece. There we go. Okay guys, so here's the deal. This is where I found the mouthpiece right here, uh, the bugle mouthpiece. And I have gone back and forth on this hill, zigzagging, wigwagging, bebopping, you name it, I've done it. Uh, I found nothing else old. I found, I think, three targets that were non-ferrous, shotgun shell, rifle casing, and a fired modern bullet. So I'm gonna give up on this area. I had not checked down the hill right behind the outhouse. I didn't really hit that. I kind of walked past it and started on this hillside. I did want to mention one thing though. You see these hawthorns and I've been watching the video from the beginning. I was saying how they was like dripping stuff on me. Well, I just went to do this shoot and the camera was just covered with like the sticky grossness, the lens. And you know, normally I just lick it off. I'll be honest, I just kind of lick it because that's your tongue is not going to scratch it. And I licked the stuff off and it was very sweet. <laughs> I'm covered with sweetness. Hope no honeybees come out here and get me. But you see the flowers all over them. Um, it's kind of weird. It's just like gross. Anyway, back down the hill behind the outhouse is a flat area that I really wanted to check. That's our next spot. Oh, another thing. Some of you might say, Chig, how far out would you go for something like this? You know, how, how far would you go thinking there might be other targets? For a special item like this, like say a bugle mouthpiece or a belt buckle or something like that, I would go at least as far out as a man could comfortably throw. Because I think of myself with that mouthpiece saying, this thing's a piece of junk, it doesn't work anymore, and throwing it out into the woods. And that's where they might have been standing or camping. So at least as far as a man can throw, I went twice that far at least, probably three times that far. As far as a drop bullet, not as far as that, of course, because they're not going to be throwing them like that. Uh, just think of a boy being angry that, you know, his belt buckle just snapped and he just pitches as far as he can to the trees. That's what I do. So I'm back by the house uh, looking for Todd. I think I actually saw him down in the bottom. I just dug this nice old hinge. That's hand forged for sure. Um, but I'll dig around here a little bit. Looks like Todd was in here. I think it's where he found his uh, spoon. I'm just going to kind of check over the area. Looks like pretty good dirt right here. So hopefully I'll come up with a little something. I'll let you know. Disappointing place, but we kind of knew it and we saw all that trash anyway. Oh, hey, listen. Remember in the beginning of the video, I dug something and I said, there's a red, something there's red, and I thought it was like a matchbox car or something. And then I tried to pick it up and it was nothing but a rock, but it was red. New shovel. It's a paint from the shovel. Sometimes I'm not too bright. This is pretty sad. I got all that sticky stuff all over my equipment and I'm like licking it all off because it's delicious. Uh, some type of... Uh, nectar anyway still in the same spot that's where i dug something right there and i got a nice big signal here so i went ahead and dug it and it looks like a beautiful axe head oh, it's in a root unfortunately <laughs> i should have dug that out of there um yes yeah, so anyways nice big old well not a giant one that's a nice one that's definitely of the old style i might be able to clean that up enough to use it touch and go though but we'll we'll give it a shot i like that one right there I just want to give you a quick reminder to always be careful of uh, arrow shafts. Now this is an aluminum bowed arrow shaft. Now, there's no uh, broadhead on the end of it, which would be very, very sharp. In fact, it would be a razor blade sharp. Um, but always be aware of this when you're out digging uh, and be careful that you don't cut yourself on, on one of those uh, broadheads. And speaking of broadheads, I got another signal about three or four inches away from that piece of arrow. And I pulled the dirt back and I felt something prick my thumb didn't cut it but there's the broadhead that went with that broken arrow that's a well it's part of it so there's another blade in there which could be three or four more blades in there but that's a that's a razor blade basically and it uh, gave me well that's not a really good signal so there's probably another piece of that aluminum arrow shaft in here maybe with some more of the stuck to it i'm not gonna put that in my bag i don't know i don't know what i'm gonna do with it but 
I don't want to cut myself on it later on. All right, be careful, guys. Okay, we're going to call it a day. We've been here at least about half a day. Not half a day, probably, what, four hours, five hours, something like that. Um, great old location, good history here, but just, you know, a lot of junk, right? Trash. And we dog and dog and dog and dog and dog, and you'll... Let, well, just take a peek. <laughs> Poor Todd. <laughs> You've seen everything here. There's nothing that you have not seen on my video. This is my best find, of course. It's a mouthpiece to either bugle or some other type of instrument. Todd, well, you did okay. I mean, you got some stuff here. Uh -huh. But this um, this is really nice. This is a handle to a pewter spoon. A very fancy one. Parts of a harmonica, something to a, a disc for a field. Not a disc, but a thing to turn the soil. That's kind of cool. I think that's a skillet mm -hmm. bottom. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's oh, wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Uh, yeah, and I think that's a fuse would go in there. I would think like a house fuse, a couple of things, horseshoe. Yeah, well, it wasn't the best of days, but we did, um, Interesting. Yeah, my first thought was a blade, but I think it's a file. I think it's a file blade. I'm trying to make it like part of a sword or something because it is sharper there. <laughs> yeah. But I have files that look like that that are kind of sharp on one end and wide there. Uh -huh. All right. Well, not a total disaster, but pretty close. Yeah. But it was fun being out, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it, it was. was. It was. So, I, I guess you'll do some story about what went on yeah, here. Yes. And, you know, mark your calendar in about one to two years, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't put out as quickly as I do. Every, um, every 12 days. 10, 12 days, at, at 10 to 12 days on his channel. And I'll post a link somewhere. Um, you, you'll, you'll one day see what happened to you, who lived here and why we're here today. Um, but yeah, that's down the road. Don't get too gray in the meantime. We'll see you on the next one. Keep it for eternity.